Hey Thumpers, welcome back to Hyper RPG. We are here to give what are you doing? Sorry, nothing. <laughs> We're here to give you guys a little update as to what's been happening at Comic Con. We are currently on day number two. End of day two. Uh, technically day three if you're all, all counting Wednesday. Wednesday kind of counts at this mm-hmm. point. I mean, Jesus Christ, it's Comic Con starting yeah. uh, like on Monday, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we want to talk about a little bit about what's been going at the con. The We've recap. been doing a lot of videos. We're going to recap this baby for a little bit. Tomorrow is a huge day. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of coverage from Hall H, talking about Warner Brothers in DC, Marvel Studios, Stranger Things. We're going to be doing a lot of trailer reaction videos and recaps. Yeah. So make sure you guys are subscribed to check out what we're doing tomorrow. A lot of, a lot of crazy stuff. But we spent the two days here already covering some stuff. And we kind of want to go through and talk about some things that have happened and news that broke outside of the con some really interesting sure. stuff talking about dc movies but let's start with thursday okay we opened up thursday with the 20th century fox panel which ended up being just kingsman, kingsman. and that was a big surprise i think big to a surprise. lot of people yeah. because a lot of people thought well it's 20th century fox they're bringing a panel on thursday it's a perfect opportunity to bring deadpool 2 deadpool 2 x-men Dark Phoenix and comes the new out Mutants. before next year's Comic Con. Yeah, it so does. this is like the last Comic Con before. You got to do that math, that movie math. Exactly. When, when's the last Comic Con before the movie release date? They're exactly. going to bring a bunch of stuff there or exactly. something. And yeah, it was a real bummer, especially because Deadpool is Comic Con. That's the whole one Comic-Con of the only Con reasons why the movie even happened. There's a billion Deadpools walking around right now at yeah. night still. Um, so yeah, that was that was a that was a real bummer, and especially because Fox has been announcing. X Men, Dark Phoenix, and new dates. mutants, you know, release dates, all this kind of stuff. So people, I think, were hoping for not necessarily, you know, they haven't started shooting a lot of this stuff, but just sure. like like somebody to come out and go, like, this is the Fox X Men universe. Right. And this is kind of what we're trying to. These are the different projects we're working on, and this is what we're sure. excited about. We're telling more stories about your favorite mutant characters and blah 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 blah, and have Ryan Reynolds come out and show off his abs in a trailer <laughs> or something. But it ended up being just Kingsman, and I know that our, our our correspondent Cameron Rice was there, and I know he talked about it in his review yeah but it was like it would have been cool if it was just the kingsman trailer or the kingsman panel but everybody was kind of like kind of wait like wait in and yeah like, okay cameron you said know? when they got to about like the 30 minute mark he was like there's nothing x-men yeah. happening here <laughs> yeah <It's> yeah <laughs> so i think that was kind of disappointing yeah i mean yeah. you would you would think that they would at least bring something even if it wasn't a trailer for deadpool 2 if it was just a clip and like hey by the way we're coming out next year this is what's happening and x-men if they just had like some photos or concept art or something sure uh dark phoenix i think may or may i think it just started filming and new mutants definitely just started filming i think like a week or two ago but yeah. we know how other studios function they will yeah. be shooting for seven days and they'll bring something yes um so yeah i, I think I still remember I think 2000, 2010 they were shooting captain america the first for avenger for one a week. week yeah and they basically came with a whole scene with hugo weaving yeah as johan schmidt like an yeah. entire scene cut together because because some studios i think they really prioritize comic-con They're yes like, oh absolutely. comic-con's coming we have to bring something right. and i know that fox in the past has been like we're not going to comic-con because last year somebody, they didn't somebody leaked our shit and it's yeah. like okay we get it but also this is a big deal and we want to hype your stuff and right. we want everybody to be excited about everything and, especially you know. when people plan their year around comic-con yeah you know oh, and there's oh, a lot of dude. investment from per- personally from speaking people. of that movie math last year before the last harry potter movie came out warner brothers had a panel and they had you know this is the last comic-con before Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 2 and people yeah. were camping out for two days people like people that flew in from London people that were like this is my chance to be at this Comic Con Harry Potter mm-hmm. panel for the and last they brought time. out Draco Malfoy and he was like hey Comic Con hey guys and then they like showed a trailer and that's it and I felt so crushed for the <laughs> Harry Potter fans that were there that were just kind of like no um, like, <laughs> that's a bummer that's a you want people that that have that dedication to like you know right feel, feel jazzed about what they're there for exactly so yeah it's a it was a bummer and i think it's a huge loss and i think fox i from everything that, that cameron told us from the kingsman panel everything that we talked about in the trailer reaction and all that kind of stuff it seems like the movie's really fun the panel was a really good time right um but i think they did miss an opportunity moving so on, we'll see on, we'll see moving on marvels and humans we you and i moving talked on, about this moving on moving on, <laughs> on. real lackluster uh, uh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, IMAX cameras on a show that doesn't look like it deserves it. We'll find it's out. Bummer. Uh, hope that Black Agar Boltagon and his crew are well serviced, but uh, I think Lockjaw looks great. Yeah, Lockjaw looked good in the Lockjaw. two shots we'll that we be saw. There. We'll be there in September to mm-hmm. check out that IMAX pilot. Absolutely. You know, we'll be there. Um, another cool thing I want to talk about, Black Panther. Yeah. The panel hasn't happened yet, but I went Thursday morning, day one, 10 a.m., first panel of the day, uh, to the fifth annual Anatomy of... of uh, Movie soundtracks? Movie Anatomy scores? of Superhero Music. Okay. 
with a bunch of different film composers. Mm -hmm. Marco Beltrami, unfortunately, had the flu. He was going to be there to kind of represent the work that he did on Logan, which I thought was awesome, and he did the Wolverine. They had the the guy who does the scores for um, the the composing for Gotham, the TV show, Mm -hmm. week in and week out. Brian Tyler was there, a big Marvel guy. He did Iron Man 3, Thor The Dark World. Fast and Furious movies. Of course, Fast and Furious movies. He he most recently did Power Rangers, I think. Yep. And then they had uh, Ludwig Göransson, who did Creed, which, just to paint the picture, they played the Creed suite uh, over the footage of Creed and then just the footage of the Black Panther trailer and when the Black Panther flipped Black Panther flipped and landed on the car it was like like just the Creed music and he landed and it was awesome but then he talked about his musical process of scoring the Black Panther he said that he went to Africa he went to a country I forget the name of it then he also went to South Africa and it was kind of like a mixing like just like a research type of thing he played they played a piece of the score Mm -hmm. it wasn't quite quite clear if it was like a sample kind of a mix thing or like if it was something was actually going to end in the film yeah it sounded so cool it had like african drums it sounded very tribal very rhythmic but at this and it had that like that that instrument from cake that that thing whatever that is it Mm -hmm. had that kind of a cool sound to it and it had like a hip-hop beat like a like a like a very modern yeah like beat feel to it i'm not tribal with like hip-hop i you know i'm not good at explaining i'm not doing it justice but i will just let you know that like i was into it it sounded different it sounded really, really exciting and cool and just not like superhero music, mm-hmm. especially after you're hearing clips of everybody's kind of work and they're yeah. talking about their process. To hear that, I was like, this is really cool. Mm-hmm. He's collaborating with Ryan Coogler. He worked on him all the way back from USC. They know each other. And he yeah. did uh, Fruitvale, I'm pretty sure. And then he did Creed. So I think it's going to be awesome. So just to report the Black Panther music, awesome. Super good. Super yeah. good. Uh, this was probably the, the biggest thing that happened. What? Uh, on Thursday. So far. We, we're, I'm, I'm really the, mixed up. They're, they're making a Doctor Doom movie? Noah I'm Hawley? Really, I'm really mixed Show running Legion? I'm really mixed. Ooh, yeah. it's very it's interesting. So the, the Legion panel was yesterday, and they talked about the show. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't get to be a part of the panel, um, but the biggest kind of drop at the end was Noah Hawley was like, oh, by the way, you know, I'm, you know, I'm just working on a Doctor Doom movie uh, for Fox. Uh, mic drop. Uh, super yeah. interesting because Fantastic Four movie. Last Fantastic Four movie was clearly a uh, little, little underwhelming. It's really bad. Really bad. Um, poor Toby Kebbell uh, got screwed in that movie. Yeah. Uh, so he was, you know, promised a cool character. Yeah. How do you cool How do you feel about them now? Just trying to do man. a solo Doctor Doom movie. I'm mixed, dude. I don't really know because again, this this everybody's comparing it to like, well, it's like when Sony's announcing a Venom movie right. without Spider Man to do the villain before or without the hero. Yeah. It seems like it's not. It, it, well, a lot of these characters, I think Doctor Doom can absolutely hold their own movie sure but it would uh, imagine it would be like doing a magneto movie before the first x-men film that x-men movie sort of set the ground rules and established a relationship between and there was an x-men movie uh, an origins of wolverine or uh, uh, magneto origins movie planned yeah there was it's true (laughs) but again and we were talking about this that i think the tv landscape is very different i think the tv landscape is very different and to be able to pull off a show that's focused on a side character like that with the budget that they have with the talent that they have it all makes sense it's all good yeah, but it's kind of different in the movie world. I don't know if we're gonna get a Legion style sort of like psychological breakdown of the the psychology of a character who is so larger than life with like a superhero movie budget. Mm-hmm. I worry that they'll be like, but it still has to be PG thirteen. It still right. has to do this. It still has to do yeah. that. We have to have Reed Richards in it. We have to have blah, blah, blah. all these things that I'm just like, there's so many variables that's tough man and again the magneto stuff that i love in x-men first class that was i think originally from a magneto script Mm -hmm. and they kind of put it into an x-men film but all of that stuff is awesome but you need before you get to young magneto you got to get to just magneto old man magneto versus the x-men him and xavier i think before you get to doom and the origin of doom you got to get to here's reed richards Mm -hmm. here is susan storm here's her kid brother johnny here's reed's best friend ben yeah and then they come across this asshole guy named victor he's a real piece of shit and then from there it's like but what what makes victor tick what is this all about right right i'm mixed on it and then again this could be awesome this could be this could be one of those things. Every once in a while, it happens. <laughs> Movie studio executives are like, what about this? And it's a smarter idea than has ever been been in a comic book for 50 years. Well, and you know it's, I mean? And it's it poss- happens. And it's possible, too, that maybe the way that Fox is trying to retool how they approach Fantastic Four is, okay, we know Doctor Doom is a really, really popular character. We know people love him. Out of the Fantastic Four, he may be people's favorite. 
how do we go about just introducing people to this universe via Doctor Doom? Sure. Do we do a really sure. solid origin story of who Doctor Doom is? And then by the end of the movie, he meets Reed and Sue and yeah. Johnny and Ben. And then the next movie is the story from the Fantastic Four's perspective. That's, and we get reintroduced to this new team. Maybe. And Maybe. Again, they're just such different tones. Yeah. The Fantastic Four is such a difficult property if you can't nail the tone. Sure. Once you nail that incredible style tone, mm-hmm. I feel like it's very simple. Yeah. But it's so tough to like to be to be cool with that. Yeah. To yeah. Just be like, this family friendly already you lost you guys stop listening. It's, it's <laughs> such a tough thing to nail. Yeah, yeah. And then for you guys to go, but what if Doctor Doom first? And which right. is a very different tone yep. than his mother was. It's, a, ca- it's kind like of that a, like, tone that we've like kind of gotten used to with comic movies now. Yes. So for them to go that and then go and then here's their enemies. It's the Incredibles. Mm. That's kind of a weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. Plus, I find it it's interesting crazy. that Noah Hawley and, and it was funny when this was announced. Some people on Twitter were like, "Who's Noah Hawley? He doesn't have a lot of credits. What has he done?" And I'm like, "Oh, you know, just a show called Fargo and uh, Legion. Awesome. Uh, you know, Fargo's only Super been nominated talented. for like a, a handful of Emmys. No big deal. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he's a very very talented guy, and a lot of people are saying that like Fargo. To, to be able to live up to what the Coen brothers did with the movie and true, to then like totally it, build off of that yeah. with this anthology series of mm-hmm. uh, Fargo is very, very impressive. So I think he's an extremely talented guy yes. to be headlining this. But I'm so no curious that, that like you're working on an X-Men property. What all of a sudden, wh- yeah. what was the pitch that really was yeah. like, oh, I'm now I'm interested in Dr. Doom. Like what did Fox have to tell you or what? Maybe, maybe he loves the character and he came I in hope. with this pitch. I hope, which would know? be great too. Maybe it was because it's all in the Fox family. Maybe yeah. somebody was like, well, we've got this stuff we're trying to figure out. One right. of those being fantastic for, and maybe Noah was just like, well, I'm interested in this doom thing. Right. I don't know, but I really hope that it's like that he loves mm-hmm. the character. Worst case scenario. Uh, yeah. Worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. We got to do a musical. <laughs> Best of it. both worlds. I'm working on it. <laughs> working on it. Working on it. I'm working. I'm in talks with Chris Bramante. We're making it happen. <laughs> yeah. We're making it happen. Uh, and then today, obviously being Friday, uh, two of the bigger things that came out uh, because mostly today was really focused on a lot of it was just TV. Really, mm-hmm. all H had mm-hmm. like Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead, Game yep. of Thrones. Yep. Then they did the Defenders, which you did a trailer reaction for, which you can watch. Uh, yeah, trailer reaction for which you can exactly, watch. Yeah. exactly. Emma's going to do a review of the first episode of the Defenders, but two things that came out. Uh, while we were at Con, but didn't actually come from the Comic Con, is we got a little bit of an update on the Shazam movie. Cool. Apparently, that movie is going to try to be shooting in, by January, or February, with so a 2019 this, release date. This might be the next DC film following will, Aquaman. Following Aquaman, which okay. I think is very, very interesting. Yeah. Obviously, uh, the Aquaman movie is not coming out to the end of next year, so that actually gives a lot of time for them sure. to develop and work on this. And who knows? It, they, when they say 2019, it could end up being at the end of 2019. So it may not directly follow Aquaman, but to be a movie following Aquaman. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, I think this was already kind of planned because I remember the original slate that they released. Um, 2019 had, to my to my knowledge, had uh, Shazam and I think it had Justice League 2. Okay. Those are the two movies. Original plan. Original is the, plan. Is the plan still that, I know we've talked about this before, is it going to be within the DC Extended Universe, or we don't know yet? Yeah, so the movie's being done by New Line, and so is the Black Adam movie. Both yeah. those movies, I, to my knowledge, are being done by New Line, um, but they are still supposed to exist in the greater DCEU. Okay. There's right been on. a little bit of back and forth on that, whether it will or won't, but the last thing that I read was it that it sense. will exist. It makes sense. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Okay, cool. Um, awesome. And David uh, David F. Sandberg, who did Annabelle Creation, and he did, I think he did, was he director of Lights Out? That movie? Where they go like this? Uh, was it David F. Sandberg? Yeah, it was. Or It Follows? No, 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 yeah. He, he did Lights Out, he's doing Annabelle. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so that's the director. Not a whole lot of updates other than that is kind of where they're going. Okay. So if it's if they're if they're following kind of like what that original uh, revelation of the slate was, then it's really kind of business Army as Hammer. usual. Go get Army. He's uh, great. For Shazam? <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah. The so would, we'll, would love it. Come on. We'll see. And we still, and it was, con- and they, well, it wasn't confirmed, but they did say that the Black Adam will n- would not be in this movie. That bums me out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so we know that the movie. Rock, we know the Rock is getting his own movie. It's uh-huh. going to be really interesting to see how those two movies are developed together. And at one point, do they intersect? Do and they listen, at all? Right before we started rolling, Cameron was asking, what other Captain Marvel villains, what other Shazam, now that's Shazam's name, yeah. what other Shazam villains are there? Uh, I'm just so used to Captain Marvel, the Marvel family. That, um, And I said, Dr. Savannah, the sort of like Lex Luthor type, little bald, you know, scientist guy. And then I said, Mr. Mind. 
And Cameron was like, if they went Mr. Mind, which is like this evil psychotic worm that like that like at one point buried itself in Skeets, the robot that Booster Gold has, yeah. and like he's this very cartoony looking worm, but he's super like a super evil genius. Cameron was like, Oh, if they go full cartoon with it, if they go full like embrace that like fun. I mean, th- one of his nicknames is the big cheese. Like yeah, this yeah. is Shazam, right? Yeah. And I was like, I would love that. I would love, love, love that. And w- maybe with the success of Wonder Woman, they're leaning more into mythology magic. Sure. Maybe with the success of you know, more comedic style superhero properties are like, let's maybe chase that a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then maybe with the Black Adam movie, that will be the thing that's like brings down the lightning and goes, no, Billy, like this is a dark world. Yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. know. That would be best case scenario. Yeah, I would love it. Uh, what I'm saying is there. I think there are some villains that could maybe use before they get to Black Adam. Sure. It's I, I really think that they need each other, mm-hmm. but maybe this could be a way to introduce some more cool stuff yeah I yeah i agree uh the, and uh i can't can't really can't really uh what? mention too enough? much you know some stuff Is know some stuff thing? but uh, yeah Comic-Con. it's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting to see how they just try to tie these two characters into the greater dceu yeah there's one thing that i know in particular but i'm so curious to see if that happens uh we'll come back and discuss it once we know for sure but it'll be guess. interesting to see how they tie a lot of the stuff in great. I have a little bit of an update. I went to a Robert Kirkman panel, my favorite comic book writer of all time, probably. And I, and I got up and I asked a question. Specifically, I'm trying to get the scoops for you guys. <laughs> He's making a movie of my favorite comic book series of all time, Invincible. If you haven't started, read it, started reading it yet, start reading it. And uh, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg from Superbad, This is the End, uh, um, uh, Preacher. Preacher, thank you. Preacher, they're doing yeah. the Invincible movie. Yeah. The interview, thank you. That's right. Uh, the interview <laughs> with um, uh, Randall 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 Park as a uh, Kim Jong Un was so funny. He was so great in that. Anyway, I asked Robert Kirkman, "Did you guy did you seek these guys out, or did they pitch to you what their take on an Invincible movie movie would be? And if they did pitch to you, what was it about their pitch that made you go, these are the guys that could do it? Because they've said." Uh, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg said we want to do everything we can to make the Invincible movie as awesome as we think it should be so I asked Robert Kirkman he said it's still too early to reveal what some of that is but he did say that they in discussion discussions with them that they said what they thought the sort of Invincible movie should be and that Robert was listening to them and kind of going like oh shit you know what yeah that is what I think it should be and I didn't even realize it that they were maybe saying like we feel like it should have this this and this and feel like this maybe the tone is like this probably mentioning other movies and Robert just kind of said that like yeah he didn't even real look at it that word realize it that way yeah, in yeah. that kind of a th- in that kind of a way uh, which is great which I'm so so excited that that's kind of moving forward that's just the answer that I wanted to get from him about that pitch and that's kind of all he gave me but that's still something that like you know I love the good stories of how pitches go in Same. Hollywood you know like that's so fascinating well one of the most intriguing pitches that that or that I would love to find out about is when they announced that David Gordon Green and, and Danny McBride were doing a Halloween movie I'm like yes. these two guys who would do comedy, comedy. exactly a very kind of sort of yeah. same thing like uh, Seth so, Rogen and Evan Goldberg is like how did you get Preacher big, how are you doing Invincible in, yeah, yeah for so sure. I'm always and interested then you in watch that Preacher kind of and you're like okay I get it it's yeah, the yeah, sense yeah. of humor it's that tone yeah so that's really exciting so that's the Invincible movie mm-hmm. update which is you know and he, Robert Kirkman also said hopefully in a couple of years yeah. we could come back and maybe show a trailer and you guys could all be like oh okay cool mm-hmm. that, so he said you know there's no a release date no nothing but just yeah, he kind of yeah. said like look for stuff in the next few years for sure that's how development works and I think then I think the last thing that we're going to talk about which was kind of a big thing yeah uh, also mildly controversial because of the timing of this piece uh, is Ben Affleck going to be exiting the DCEU or are they going to be recasting Batman at some point this is so, a, coming from the Hollywood Reporter yes and all they said was that they have a source yes so and we're not confirming anything no. they didn't confirm anything we're just going to talk about basically how we feel about this and whether or not you know kind of what the what the options could be for for Batman essentially and, exiting and, out and of these really movies why this or Ben Affleck even became a thing I don't right. know because when you read this specific specific wording uh first of all uh um to- uh, toby emmerich who's a warner brothers guy yeah he's said, one of the studio chiefs he said ben is our batman we love him as batman we want to keep him in the cowl as long as we can mm-hmm. so they're sort of like denying they're like no no no. this is the case matt reeves was asked about it on a war of the planet of the apes war for the planet yeah of the he apes. was doing the press you junket know, for war of the planet of the apes and you know and and they keep because this this sort of rumor i know this rumor of ben affleck potentially exiting the dcu has been happening for a while now it's been you know four five six months and some of it has come from his personal personal life because he's been doing you know dealing with things sure, like going through sure. rehab he completed rehab life. earlier in the year Absolutely. life man life, life. he yeah. got divorced yeah. while he was making batman versus superman so like there's a lot of personal things that this man is going through so if he and is not only that i just want to interrupt yeah, yeah, i just yeah. want to say like 
I think that, again, it all comes down to the wording. Yes. When you hear something like, oh, Ben Affleck is going to be Batman for X number of movies or sure. for this long, people think, oh, he's quitting. He's And at, and, right. and, and anytime I read that stuff, I just feel like it's the same as when Robert Downey Jr. is discussed as Iron Man yeah. saying, you know, when he's going to be do, he's gonna do <laughs> three movies and that's all he's contracted for. Or, you know, he said recently even, he goes, I want to stop being Iron Man before it gets embarrassing. Right. right. Does that necessarily mean that, like, he's done and he's quitting? And right. No, it's just like, you got three Iron Man movies. Right. He's showing up in other stuff. It's a, yeah. At one point, he's doing he's, four Avenger movies. He's going to stop playing these characters. Right, right. He's on that's four right. Avengers movies. He's done a Captain America movie. He's on a yeah. Spider Man movie. Ben know. Affleck was in Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. He had a cameo role in Suicide Squad. He's yeah. in Justice League. He's doing th- this movie, The Batman. Right. Which is, again, a as far as director writer Matt Reeves said is moving forward and that he said no uh, no he said no Ben that's the plan is it's going to be Ben and we're going to move forward yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's just like I think that people think that Ben Affleck is uh, like immortal like forever he's going to be 45 old. yeah you and know that, like, soon <laughs> and he's going to do Batman's for the rest of like 20 years being alive it's yeah. like no when they talk about you know that's just this is how this stuff works he's right. going to do a couple movies and this is why Warner Brothers and DC, they're introducing new characters. This is why the right. beginning of Wonder Nightwing Woman Wing and Batgirl had that and all logo with all those characters. It right. wasn't just Batman, 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 Batman. Everybody loves Batman, but like right. they're going to show there's you hundreds guys of how characters cool in this Nightwing universe. is. They're going right. to show you guys how cool Shazam is. Like, There's a reason they're making new movies. It's because yeah. you can't make Batman movies forever. Exactly. That's part of the, the thing, And I think that's know? part of the thing, too, is like Warner Brothers has really been banking on Batman for all the years. And it's understandable because he is their highest selling character. Yeah. But I think it's a perfect opportunity that if you are going to make these movies, you have to make movies about everyone. Sure. You can't just focus on Batman. Yeah. But it's super, super interesting. And I think for me, I look at it and I go, okay, if Ben Affleck wants to step away from being Batman for personal reasons, mm-hmm. that's totally valid. That's totally fine. Uh, if Ben Affleck wants to step away from these movies because he doesn't like the way that these movies are being made, that's a whole other story. Sure. That's a whole sure. other story. But we don't know what what the what the reasoning is that they yeah. want to phase him out and if he wants to be phased out and they did say that if he is to be phased out and again none of this is confirmed if he is to be phased out they're going to do it through the storytelling process of the movies yeah and what does that even, mean and again adam not even what just came out of your mouth right it's, a, it's this very specific it's it's, it's like they, i'm gonna pull it's it up speculation it's, it's, it's all speculation that, uh, can you just pull up the yes. hollywood reporter they said according to a source that they would address it yes in a future they said they literally said a source says they're going to address the change in some shape or form in one of the upcoming DC films. Yes. Now, as a comic book nerd, you look at that and you go, oh my God, they're going to do a reality changing because I know stupid shit that yeah. studio executives don't give a crap about. <laughs> yeah. But all that literally could mean is, again, when a character in a popular superhero movie was recast from Iron Man 1 to Iron Man 2, Terrence Howard to Don Cheadle. Yes. Don Cheadle first appears on screen. Robert Downey Jr. just says, here. Oh, well, we didn't expect to find you here. And he yeah. goes, I'm here. Let's get over it. It's Boom. me. Uh, let's That's move on. That's them addressing it, but right. it's not like an in-story like... Right. It's not, it's it's not, not important not, to the story of the yeah, movie. Yeah, so that I, re, I re-read it, re-read it, re-read it, and I'm like, that could mean... Anything. literally anything and then there's the other extreme where it's like could they be doing a flashpoint, flashpoint. movie are they they're gonna have br- flash reset the universe they're gonna bring back jeffrey dean morgan to play thomas wayne as right. a batman as for one batman. movie and at the end they're gonna have they're a new reset actor it. be like a younger and yes. like, they, it, so many different things that it's just like <laughs> yeah i don't know man it's, it's so it's, and it's so hard to have an opinion about it because like we really don't know anything yeah. and obviously warner brothers isn't going to comment on this because we're one day away from the and Justice even, League and, panel. And even if they do, their comment will literally be this. He's going to be in Justice League. Obviously, it's coming out in a couple of months. Right. He's here at Comic-Con. And then we're going to do the Batman. Yes. And then because of contractual reasons, they're not going to say like, and then the next gonna Batman movie is going to come and out. And, right. yeah, it's just gonna and be a sequel like, to Justice League and this, like, and this and this. That's what right. we have right now. That's yeah. what we're working on. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, if people ask him, but what about 2030? It's like, right. it's it's 2017 right exactly. now. Like. Plus, uh, plus, I think, you know, and we've talked about it at length, but, you know, we always talk about when Ben Affleck was doing the press junket for Live By Night, the only thing he was always asked about was yeah. Batman, 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 Batman. When are you making a Batman movie? When are you making a Batman movie? And you could tell mm-hmm. how frustrated and how irritated he was. I'm, part to, I'm partly to blame. And, I interviewed and, uh, Ben Affleck for, uh, for The Accountant. Right. And my, the company that I was th- on there on behalf of, of course, ask me. Be sure, sure you ask about that. Like, it's like, uh God, the, especially I'm when you have Ben Affleck and J.K. Simmons, I'm here to talk about the accountant. Yeah. You want me to ask? Like, and they're like, "Yeah, you have to ask about Batman because that's what you guys love care about. Right. That's what we all care about." Yeah, and it's a bummer. 
um, because you just want everybody to be cool. You want I want Ben to be able to do what he wants to do. I want yeah. him to be an actor, director, do all of that stuff. Obviously, I want to enjoy his movies. Right. I very much enjoy his His movies. last movie won a Best Picture Oscar. <laughs> exactly. Exa- Argo was awesome. Yeah. Uh, and he's an awesome Batman. And, you know, the problem is, is that the internet's a very different place than it was even when Daredevil came out. Yeah. Even when Goodwill Hunting came out. You know, it's very different. And he talked about on Jimmy Fallon, the first comment he read when he was first announced as, you know. No! no and it's like a big jokey thing, but it's just like, dude. Right. I it this is such a tough role to take on. Yeah, and especially because, because Batman vs yeah. Superman was such a divisive movie, sure, it just sure. adds more fuel to that fire. And, and you know, it's like I just wish that Mr. Affleck understands that like everybody really dug him as Batman. They, right. That they want him to do it for as long as he wants and I know that he's passionate about the character and that's I think that's what everybody wants is if you're yeah. passionate about the character and you're, in a, and you're in a position to tell cool stories and cool movies right. go for it but if you don't want to do it anymore don't do it anymore but yeah. this this stuff it's like yeah it's just I feel so frustrated and bummed out because it's we know nothing and people are taking two sentences from the Hollywood Reporter and just like what unraveling it's it like, exactly it's like le- how about we wait till tomorrow morning right. Warner Brothers is going to say what they're going to say and then we'll go from there and exactly. then you know again and they can't even say anything. they're going to say no. four sentences no and, exactly they're there they're there to focus on Justice League they're there to focus on Aquaman yeah. if they come with additional material and if they reveal a new slate that's like Batman's happening this time yeah. we're doing Flash we're doing this we're doing that that's great but like I really don't think people should pick this apart again the Hollywood Reporter even says it's from a source they're not confirming anything we don't know we just have to kind of let this thing unravel itself whether or not he's batman for one more movie two more movies for 10 more movies whatever the reasoning is behind it i mean it's the same thing like with Zack snyder when Zack snyder was trying to find a way how do i trans how do i tell the audience that i'm stepping away from this movie and it's not because the studio is mad at me we're in conflict and and fans hate me blah 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 blah. about his his personal exactly exactly and it sucked you know he has to come out here and tell you like well i'm stepping away from this movie because you know, I had a family tragedy. Joss Whedon is going to take over, and sure. because as soon if they would have just said Joss, uh, you know, Zack Snyder. Out, we also found out. Oh, side note: Zack yeah. is not going to be here tomorrow for. He Justice will not League, be here tomorrow. But yes. he was like sending his love via Twitter, which yes. I was a cool tweet. So yes, yeah. Joss Whedon yeah. won't be here. Zack Snyder won't be here. There will be. I'm sure the the cast is definitely going to be here. Mm-hmm. A representative or Chris Hardwick will just moderate the panel. Yeah. yeah right oh my god can you imagine yeah, but but yeah so and, and it sucks because yes you know people this stuff is just it's not that big a deal right if ben affleck doesn't want to do it anymore then don't do it don't, don't do it anymore recast the role yeah. I, I don't think there needs to be this speculation about oh it's going to be this reality like it right doesn't, we don't have to do and it. i think and people do the same thing for the marvel cinematic sure, universe like about sure, after sure. phase three are you rebooting it it's like are you recasting iron man who's gonna play captain ha- america like, it's like don't on. worry about it yeah. let the movies unravel themselves other stuff we're working on. right and don't and it, and it also it goes back to the whole thing of like let's not make the studio feel pressured like they have to do something a certain way sure and i think that's part of uh i don't want to say warner brothers fall but it is some one of the things that they like, it's not just that it's pop culture it's, exactly it's, it's it, the way that everybody because i love batman i yeah. love batman and i love iron man but i also love comics and i love these worlds you love and I'm char- like, all I'm the like, other characters i love the rest of these characters yeah. too you know and i've i'm like i just want a martian manhunter movie right I just, you know yeah. that whole thing of like you i want to be a walking theater and all of a sudden john jones like yes, pops in you're like want, oh shit. i want black panther two and three mm-hmm. i want to see know about the next spider-man movie i want captain marvel mm-hmm. i want to get you know ant-man and the wasp i'm excited about that just as i'm excited about Aquaman, Shazam, yeah. Blue Beetle Booster Gold. Right. Where's my Plastic Man movie? Like, <laughs> I want to see that stuff. Yeah. You know, um, as much as I love the the mainstay. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, I, I w- what I would say to fans is just relax. Don't worry about it. If if these websites want to write these articles and they want to speculate to death, let them speculate. If you don't want to read it, just simply don't read it. Mm-hmm. Just let the movies or, happen. More importantly, if you do read it, like yeah. read it, but but under- be fully but, informed. But just. L- read every single line. Yes. And, and I, when a when a website mm-hmm. regurgitates what the Hollywood Reporter said, click on the link where it says go the to the Hollywood source. Report, like go to the Hollywood Report, find the actual source right. of it. And if the Hollywood Reporter says, again, a source says addressing the change, it's like okay, okay. Then yeah. you got to look for what the official announcements exactly. are from studio heads. Exactly. Actors, and I think that's the biggest thing that we that we tend to do a lot. We look at the headline and we go just strictly based on the headline and we do worst case scenario, best case scenario. Uh, you really you really need to just read it, be fully informed, not just surface level stuff, and then make your own deci- make your, make up your own opinion or make up your own decision. That's the, I think the best thing that we can do. Yeah. But Super excited. Tomorrow, Hall H, Warner Brothers, DC Comics, Marvel Studios. Really, really, oh. really good day. We're going to be packed. We're going to be busy as hell. Mm-hmm. Me, Augie, and Hector are going to be here doing trailer reactions for all these movies. We're going to do some stuff with other shows. And, of course, the awesome crew that's here. 
is also going to be doing stuff for all the other shows too. So we couldn't do it without their help. Make sure you guys show them a lot of love in the comments. Let us know how you guys feel about all these stories and everything that's been breaking out of Comic Con. And uh, make sure you guys are subscribed right here. Of course, youtube.com slash hyperrpg for all the latest videos. We'll catch you tomorrow. Bye.